What's up guys, Romsko here, back with another review, the show where we find out whether or not you should buy some audio equipment or not. And today, we are taking a look at the $50 Comica Micro Shotgun Microphone or the Comica VM102. And links are going to be in the description down below to buy it. So let's get right into this box. So on the outside of the box, we get a few features of what this mic is capable of. It has a cardioid mic pattern, it's mini and light, has a shock mount, has super anti-interference, whatever that means, and it can also be used for your smartphone, GoPro, and camera body. Now the first thing I was really surprised by is that this microphone actually comes with a hardcover case, and it's not like a Pelican case hard, but more of a Beat Studio, Nubuck material, soft and durable case. And you can also see that the Comica logo is actually embossed into the plastic itself, which is pretty cool. Inside the case, we have a whole bunch of stuff. First, we have some crazy dense foam to hold the mic and stabilizer in so nothing can get damaged in transit, which is probably the best thing about this case. And the foam is also removable, so if you want to put another mic into here or store something else, it's absolutely perfect for that. Let's start off with the extras, which are found in this convenient elastic netting. First, we have two short coil cables of different colors. The black and black one is for your camera bodies, while the grey one is specifically to your smartphones and there's a little icon on the grey little head that has a little tiny smartphone logo on it to remind you just in case you forget and it's actually crucial for you to actually use the proper cables. We also get a really fluffy wind muff with an elastic opening which means even with a lot of wind there will be basically no interference with sound quality and there's also a Comica tag attached to it. We also get a regular foam windscreen for just regular indoor recording so plosives can be reduced if the source is super close to the mic. And of course the main attraction is the mic itself along with the stabilizer mount. The microphone is made mostly of a durable plastic with a soft coat finish making it seem quite premium. It has a logo and the model number tastefully placed onto the tube and the mic has a cardioid pattern meaning it is focused more towards the front but will also record what's on the side and all these holes are a part of that mic. And at the back we have a port to insert the cable and that's just a great feature. As for the stabilizer, it's made of a black rubber plastic compound that's fairly light and will absorb minimal shocks when the mic is attached. A red version is also available if you're into the traditional road colorway. Moving down, the cold shoe screw is very smooth on the threads and is very easy to tighten and loosen. As for attaching the mic, the two grasp points are really tight so the mic will never fall out no matter how hard you shake it. Also, I mount it incorrectly here. You should always have the pointy edges face forward instead of backwards, because if you want to use the viewfinder while the mic is mounted, you're going to have a lot of trouble with that edge sticking into your forehead. So how does the microphone sound? Well, right now we are using the Comica Micro to record all of this audio, and honestly, I'm really impressed. The sound signature isn't flat at all, and it actually can pick up a lot of the lower frequencies, which I actually prefer when it comes to talking audio. And of course, the closer you are to the mic, the better the sound quality and the isolation will be. From two feet away, as we are right now, it's absolutely perfect for daily vlogs or any kind of sit-down vlogs like the one you're watching right now. And just like all shotgun microphones, once you start getting past a certain distance between the subject and the microphone, the audio quality is not going to be optimal anymore. The isolation is going to drastically reduce, you're going to hear a lot more of your surroundings and the environment around you, but this situation can happen from time to time when you're filming and you just sometimes got to adapt to the situation either increasing the gain or reducing the sensitivity or just using a lav mic for a further away distance of recording instead of having the optimal version where you're actually just two feet away from the microphone and the isolation is perfect and the sound quality is at its optimal performance. To show you guys the baseline quality of this Comica microphone right here, I'm going to be comparing it between the Blue Yeti microphone, the Lumix G9, and the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. I want to show you guys the differences between something like a PC mic versus a camera body mic versus a smartphone mic because they all have different microphones and they perform very differently. All the audio in this comparison test will be unaltered so you can hear everything at an equal volume on whatever device you're watching this on. So let's get into it. This is an audio recording on the Lumix G9 with the stock microphone from 12 inches away. This is an audio recording on the Lumix G9 with the Comica Micro Shotgun Microphone from 12 inches away. This is an audio recording on the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus with the stock microphone from 12 inches away. 
This is an audio recording on the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus with the Comica Micro from 12 inches away. And this is a recording on the Blue Yeti microphone with the cardioid pattern from the average distance of 6 inches away. Like I mentioned before, using the right cables is crucial for proper audio recording. If you use the smartphone cable for your camera body, there will basically be no audio because the plug doesn't match the port, and you'll just be left with just video and no audio, which sucks. And if you use the camera cable to your smartphone, it will just end up using the stock microphone to record instead. For Android users specifically, you'll see this prompt when properly using the Comica mic once you press record. And if you're an iPhone user, just do a test run to make sure the Comica mic is actually being used instead of your stock microphone. So there you have it, the $50 Comica Micro microphone. $10 cheaper than the Rode Micro and the quality is definitely still there. So if you're looking for a fairly cheap microphone for vlogging or just need something to record audio better than the stock microphones of your cameras, then this is a great option for you. And links to buy the microphone is going to be in the description down below as usual. So in conclusion, I give this Comica Micro Shotgun microphone a 9 out of 10 on the ROM scale. It's got a good sound signature, it comes with a hard carrying case with a bunch of needed accessories, and it's cheaper than the Rode Micro. Although it's only $10 cheaper than the Rode Micro, $10 saved is $10 earned. Thanks for watching this video guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.